stop for a second. I want you to think about the messiest data set you have, whether that's an Excel file or a database, the data that you just dread working with. Now imagine if we could take that data and make it clean itself with the click of a button. If it sounds too good to be true, it's not, because I'm going to show you how to do automated data cleaning with Power Query. There are some incredible tools built right in that will take away all the hassle. Set it once and forget it. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Mike. I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've helped companies everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100 automate more than 20,000 hours out of their workflows. And today, I want to help you do the same. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step how to set up data cleaning in Power Query. You won't believe how easy or user-friendly it is. And the best part? Power Query is free and built right into the Excel you already have. If you haven't already, make sure to click the link down in the description to join my weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I'm going to send you a copy every single Wednesday with tips, tricks, and hacks just like this. Also, when you click that link, I'm going to send you a copy of my guide to 15 five-minute finance automations that you can use today. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Now, before we get going in Power Query, I want you to know this is an intermediate video. It's not fully advanced, but you do need to know the basics of Power Query because I'm not going to cover the basics of how Power Query works, how to pull in data and things like that. If you need to learn Power Query, I've got a great video. I'll put the link right up here. This is going to teach you how to learn Power Query in under 15 minutes. You'll get all the basics and you'll be ready for this video. So if you don't know Power Query, check out that video, come back, and then all of this will make sense to you. So let's talk about data cleaning with Power Query. Now, there's five main types of data cleaning that you're going to want to do for nearly every file that you pull into Power Query. The first thing you want to do isn't so much data cleaning as it is data profiling. This is going to look across your entire data set and quickly tell you where any issues, errors, or concerns are. Again, it's going to evaluate the whole thing, and there's three different things we can look at. We can look at the column quality, the column distribution, and the column profile. Let's walk through each of these step by step. So here we've got our spreadsheet ready to go. Let's go ahead and pull in our first data set to Power Query. I'm going to go ahead and pull in an Excel workbook. And I've got a special point of sale data file that I broke just to make sure we'd have some stuff to look at. So here's our point of sale data broken. And I threw in a couple of things here so that we can have a few items to look at and make sure we're really cleaning broken data. So we've got our data here. We're going to pull in our POS data. Let's go ahead and hit transform. We're just going to go straight into transform. We don't need to load it. So the first thing we're going to do is look at our column profiling. So we're going to go to view and you're going to find all of it in data preview. So what we want to do here is we want to look at column quality, column distribution, and column profile. Now let me go through those one at a time so you can see them. So column quality is going to tell you if there's anything that is an error or if there's any empty cells. Now right off the bat, you'll see the column profiling is just based on the top thousand rows. We actually want to click this button and base it on the entire data set because the top thousand rows isn't really going to be all that helpful. So Power Query is going to go ahead and spin and it's going to evaluate the entire data set and then come back and do those same things for us. All right, so now, and that's a good thing we did that, we see we have errors. So there is less than 1%, but there are some errors in the data set we need to address. Uh, looks like we have them on the month column as well. So a few things we want to look at there. So this is going to let us know if our data is valid. That's column quality. Now let's check column distribution. Column distribution is going to tell us kind of the distribution across all this. So it's going to tell us how many distinct values, how many unique values. All right, so that's going to be the distribution across our columns. Now let's click column profile. All right, and this is the last one. We can look at any individual column. So like, let's go to transaction date. This is going to tell us for transaction date, what's the distribution of these? How many of the count? How many are distinct? What's the minimum, the maximum, the average? This gives you an opportunity to look for outliers, to make sure that there's nothing really crazy happening in your data. Like if I came to transaction quantity, I'll know that there's three errors. So it can't give us the distribution because there's errors. We can fix those and come back. Oh, look at this lower moon Hatton. That's really fun. So there's a lot of things that we want to fix here. And that's where column quality, column distribution, and column profile can let us know before we start what we're working with. The second group is going to be trimming, cleaning, and standardizing text. This is where we're going to start with the absolute basics and really just make the text kind of behave better the way we need it to. We can trim spaces, whether they're before, after, or hidden within it. We can clean non-printable characters, any wingdings or silly things like that. 
and we can standardize the capitalization to make sure it's consistent across the data set. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. So for standardizing our text, we're really going to focus on these th three text columns. So this is what we're going to run it on. So our first thing, we're going to want to trim our white space. So we're going to come up to transform, we're going to go to format, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this trim button. And that's going to remove any extra white spaces automatically. Now you'll see the code up here. You have text.trim, that's the function, but if we use the header, we're going to be able to just pop this in with one click of the button and we don't need to write the code. But do know, you can write the code if you need to. Now the second thing we're going to do, we're going to come back up here to formatting, and now we're going to clean our data. So when we hit clean, this is going to remove all of those non-printable characters. This is going to make sure that all of the data is readable, there's no wingdings, there's no symbols that we don't want in there. So now it's all cleaned up. And here, this is text.clean. So text.trim, text.clean. And then the last one we're going to work with, we're going to go to format one more time. And then we can do lowercase, uppercase, or capitalize each word to make sure that everything is consistent. Now, when we're working with a raw data set like this, none of this is, you know, a copyrighted name, none of this is a business name. We're going to make it all lowercase just so it's consistent. So let's go ahead and pop lowercase. You'll see all of the data has now changed to lowercase. And as a reminder, as we do our steps, they're all tracking over here on the right under applied steps. And that one is text.lower. You'll also have text.uppercase. And then you'll have the one where you have the capitalize of the first letter and then everything else is lowercase. So you can do all of those as you need to. So that is our trim, cleaning, and standardizing our text. Third, we're going to replace and normalize values. This is where we're going to make inconsistent entries consistent so we don't have random extra values showing up. For quick fixes, we can use replace values if the same issue keeps creeping in. We can build a translation or lookup table if we keep having issues with vendor, region, or department names. You know, this is where you have the extra period appear or a comma in one name and no comma in the other. And then we're also going to learn how to leverage fuzzy matching for near duplicates so we don't have to catch every single one ourselves. We want to replace our values for some quick fixes. In this case, we already noticed it. This should be Lower Manhattan, and it's come through as Lower Moonhattan. You haven't worked in finance or with data until you've had things like this pop in. It's super fun. So let's go ahead and fix this. So this is something, let's just say our POS constantly generates this error, and we want to fix it for management reporting. We can do that easily. So we're going to right click here. We're going to go to Replace Values. The value to find is going to be Lower Moonhattan, and we want to replace this with Lower Manhattan. All right, we'll go ahead and hit OK, and now all of our values are going to change, and again, our steps are counting over here on the right, so we make sure we know what we're doing. The next one is pulling in a translation table and fuzzy matching. So let's say for our categories that the POS just can't get them right, there's all of these random ones in there, you know, periods, commas, so we can build a mapping table to translate these over. Let's go ahead and pull in our mapping table. We'll go to home, we'll pull in our mapping table. This is going to be in an Excel workbook. It's our mapping table. Let's go ahead and pull in our product mapping. This is going to be all of our different categories. See, we have our category mapped right here. Let's load that in. All right, so there's our product type and our category mapped. We're going to come back. We're going to merge these together. So we'll have our product type right here. Pull in our product type right here. And this is the trick I mentioned about fuzzy mapping. So we've captured the majority of our mappings in this table. But sometimes the point of sale will surprise us and throw some additional things in. So what fuzzy matching is going to do is you can set a threshold and it will match things that aren't quite right. So we're going to click the fuzzy matching and then we're going to go to fuzzy matching options. Now I typically recommend a similarity threshold of 0.8. What that means is if they are 80% similar, right? 80-20 rule. If they're 80% similar, it's going to match it. That's a pretty good rule, and it's going to get you where you need to be 99% of the time. And you can tell it's working. It's going to tell you how many rows this matches, and this table has now matched every single row. So with our fuzzy matching set, where we're ignoring the case and matching the combining text parts, we're going to match every single thing with a corresponding value. So that works for us. Let's hit OK. We've pulled that in. We'll uncheck this. We'll just pull in our category mapped. And now we've got a whole other table here. We'll go ahead and clean this up. Category. 
And we'll go ahead and clean up the name, category, map, and now we've got a clean mapping that will work for our management reporting. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I post a new video like this every single Monday, and I don't want you to miss a thing. Fourth, we want to remove junk data and handle any nulls in the data set that could complicate calculations down the road. We're going to get rid of what doesn't belong. We'll remove duplicates by key columns. We're going to filter out any test rows, empty rows, or summary text. And then we'll replace nulls with default values so we know our calculations will run. So the first thing we want to look at is our transaction ID, because we identified that there are some duplicates in here. You can see one right here, two and two. We do not want any duplicates because there shouldn't be duplicate transaction IDs. So for this, we're just going to do remove duplicates. It's very similar to the function in Excel. We're going to right click. We're going to go to remove duplicates. Boom, all of our duplicates are gone. You can see the double twos are fixed. So that's removing duplicates. Next, we want to filter out garbage. So looking at the column profile, you can tell that if we look at the hours, we have some hours in here where hour 23 popped in. That's not possible because the coffee shop closes at seven, so there cannot be a 23. So we're going to go to hour and we're going to filter out that 23. You see it right down here. We're going to go ahead and uncheck that because again, we close at seven. So that's the last hour we should have transactions. Hit OK. And we've removed that garbage data that just should not be there. Our point of sale systems just love to throw us for a loop. And lastly, we're going to handle nulls. So we saw when we were working with all of our IDs and dates and transaction quantities that there's some nulls here. So we're going to highlight our rows. We're going to right click. Now, there's two options here. Option one is you can just remove the errors. Option two is you can go in and you can replace the values if you know they're nulls. Let's go ahead and remove the errors, though. All right, so we've removed the errors. Now, if I go back, there should be no nulls. No nulls there. Check here. Lastly, we're going to fix our data types and make sure we're ready for analysis. We're going to set the correct data type, whether that's text, numbers, dates. For any numbers as text issues, we'll fix that with number from text, a function built into M in Power Query. And we're going to split and merge columns to create structured data. So one of the first things we want to do is we need a unique product list. So we need a list where we can just look at all of our different unique products for some different analysis and different charts we're doing. So for that, we're going to combine a column together. You can also separate columns, but we're going to combine a column. I'm going to do this with column from example because it's the best way to do it. All right, so let's go to here, and I'm going to give it an example. So what I want this to be is unique. So I want it to be coffee, gourmet, brewed coffee, and Ethiopia. And this is going to give us our unique product list. We'll hit OK, and it's caught what we're doing. So it's saying, OK, yeah, I'm going to pull in the, I'm going to pull in these three together, create a unique product list. Boom. And that's our merge, and we'll call this unique product. Beautiful. So we've got that again, you can split things, you can pull them all together. But this is going to be used for some of our data sets to make sure that we have a unique identifier for each of these. And sometimes we're going to want to go in, remove duplicates, there'll be some few other tweaking we want to do on our front end. But this sets us up on the back end with unique product identifiers. So now let's go through and make sure our data types are all right, because this can really mess up our analysis. We want to make sure that all of our numbers are numbers. We want to make sure that our dates are dates, which they are. You can tell by the symbol here. We have numbers here. We have a calendar here. Numbers again. Numbers. Our text is text. Ah, here's an error. So our product ID is stored as text. We want to fix that so we can make sure to work with this as a number. Otherwise, it will not calculate correctly. So let's come here. Let's go to a decimal number. We're going to replace this. And look at that. We are now a number saved just as we should be. Go across the rest of it, text, 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 number, text, number, text, and number, text, text. We are good. So our data set is all cleaned up. Now it's time for your analysis and everything else that comes after that. But the great thing is because Power Query saves all of our steps. Every time we import a data file, if we import it with these steps, it's always going to be 99% clean, and then we'll just have to do the last piece of the tweaking. This is work that manually in Excel could take analysts hours previously, but now with Power Query, it can be done in seconds once you have this all set up. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out my guide to Power Query Secrets. You won't believe all of the powerful functions that you can get out of Power Query now that your data is clean and ready to use. I'm going to put the link to that video here. Again, don't miss my Power Query Secrets that will save you hours every single week. I'll catch you over there. This is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.